সো প্রিয় দর্শক সবাইকে আমন্ত্রণ জানাচ্ছি ফার্মিং ফিউচার বাংলাদেশ নিবেদিত দীপ্ত টেলিভিশনের নিয়মিত আয়োজন দীপ্ত কৃষি সংলাপে পাওয়ার্ড বাই কাজী ফার্মস দীপ্ত কৃষি সংলাপের মাধ্যমে আমরা কৃষি নানাবিধ সমস্যা এবং সমাধানের উপায় নিয়ে আলোচনা করি আমাদের আজকের আলোচনার বিষয় বাংলাদেশে বিটি বেগুনের বর্তমান এবং ভবিষ্যৎ করণীয় কি কি রয়েছে তা সম্পর্কে এই বিষয়ে আলোচনার জন্য স্টুডিওতে আমাদের সাথে আজকে যুক্ত হয়েছেন ডক্টর মারিসিলিস এসেভেডো রিসার্চ প্রফেসর ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ গ্লোবাল ডেভেলপমেন্ট অ্যাট কর্নেল ইউনিভার্সিটি এবং ডিরেক্টর ফর দি ফিড দ্য ফিউচার ইনসেক্ট রেজিস্ট্যান্ট এগ প্ল্যান্ট পার্টনারশিপ প্রোগ্রাম ইন বাংলাদেশ ডক্টর মারিসিলিস থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ ফর কামিং ইন অ স্টুডিও অ্যান্ড Uh, joining this discussion program you have been working around the world uh, in different developing country uh, so wh- what do you see uh, the innovation the evolving uh, the, the how it's evolving across the country and how it's benefiting smallholder farmer in different communities thank you so much Harry, for having me in your program and, and having the opportunity to talk to your audience so uh, over the last 15 years has been uh, working as a researcher and scientist developing technology but uh, more recently i've been really engaged and really passionate about seeing the uh, application of science in farmers fields um, so in bangladesh we have been working very closely with bardi with badc um, with the AE in bringing together uh, scientists not only from bangladesh from around the world to develop release and um multiply bt eggplant in in bangladesh with the idea of um reducing hunger mm-hmm. uh and improving the livelihood of farmers in, in bangladesh so it's really exciting to see science really reaching farmers fields so correct me if i'm not wrong uh, bt eggplant was introduced back in 2013 and initially only uh, 20 or nearly 100 farmers started growing it how many farmers are actually growing this crop now it's amazing to see over 65,000 farmers growing BT eggplant in the last season. And that speaks to about the success uh, of that technology, the efficiency of it, and how farmers are really picking up this technology, these scientific discoveries, development that are homegrown, uh, where uh, scientists in Bangladesh have really worked together uh, to uh, not only develop that technology, but making sure that farmers understand that technology and pick it up. And, and seeing the results in the field. So from 20 to 65, that tells you how good the technology is because farmers would not continue to grow it uh, if they were not sure that it's working and they see the results in the, f- in the field, not only in the quality of the product, but economically advantages of it. So what, what particular work that this uh, eggplant improvement partnership program is doing in Bangladesh? So over the last, uh, so this project builds on the successes of the previous investments. So in, initially it was about developing, getting that uh, technology in, BT, in eggplant and releasing it and farmers starting to learn about it. In the second phase of this uh, investment, um, farmers start picking it up, multiplying the seed, getting all that seed system you know, uh, around the, uh, the, the country. And now we're focusing on what do we need to do to sustain this technology. Now that we know it's safe, it's working well, farmers know about it, it's what is next. So what we're hearing from the farmers is like they want the technology in more varieties because mm-hmm. we only have the technology in four varieties and it, they can only grow it mostly in the winter. Um, so now we're going to, now that we know that farmers want this technology, that we are going to put it in additional varieties. So we're working together with Bari scientists on identifying um, high yielding, good quality, market ready varieties that where we can then put this technology, this resistance to insect, the major pest, the, sh- the shoot and, food, uh, and fruit borer of eggplant, so that then they can enjoy it in all different varieties of eggplant because in Bangladesh you have so many different right, um, right. varieties. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you are talking about the resistance so what is the difference of BT eggplant with other eggplant? I mean, we have many, many brinjal varieties and other crops. So what difference does it make uh, in, in field and in laboratory when you talk about BT eggplant or the technology itself? Great, great question. Because um, the uniqueness of the BT beringial um, varieties is that they carry a single gene from a bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis, BT for short, um, that produces a, a protein that is toxic to an insect, the fruit and shoot borer, and that's the major pest. So by carrying this protein, by producing this protein in the plant, then the eggplant can protect itself 
from the insect. So what does it do? It allows the farmer to not have to spray for this particular pest. And farmers were spraying, are spraying, up to a, a hundred times mm -hmm. in a season to have a good yield. Um, so when they have Bt beryngial growing in their field, they don't have to. And that is not only a reduction of inputs, costs associated with production, but it, it makes the quality of the product much better because has no damage. The farmer can harvest more. It's a lower cost to the farmer and it's safer not only for him or her in the field, but their family and the environment. So what is not to love about this technology? So that's why they're asking us, put it in additional varieties. So I mean, does it add any, any extra cost for the farmer? Because you are talking about some additional value to it. So will it cost more for a farmer to grow Bt eggplant in the field? So that's a great question, because what it does really is reduces the cost of inputs. Um, so a farmer uh, having to spray insecticide is a high cost to the farmer. So in this case, they don't have to. So in many farmers are used to um, buying um, seed, not only of open pollinated varieties, but also of hybrids. So we know that farmers, when they see a product that is uh, worth producing, they are willing to pay a little bit extra maybe for seed. In our cases right now, farmers uh, can uh, access this technology at very low cost or no cost at all. Uh, but the increase in um, production and quality and the value of the crop in the, in the market can really uh, increase their income by six times of what they were receiving before from the same land. You have been engaged uh, with Cornell for many years and you, you know about Bt Brinjal and its adoption, how it evolved in Bangladesh. So wh what is your observation uh, regarding the adoption and accepti acceptance of Bt Brinjal in Bangladesh? You know, um, so like we, we talk about, from going from 20 uh, uh, farmers to over 65, it tells you that farmers are picking it up. Um, that it's, not on, it's only about 15% of the farmers are using uh, that technology. But when we asked in a recent study about why farm, some of the farmers that were not growing, why they were not growing, and what we learned is that they didn't know that that technology exists. They didn't know what Witte Birinjal was about. Uh, so once we had the opportunity to explain them the benefits of that technology, the first thing we hear, I want it. I want to grow it. Um, so that's what we're finding. The technology is well accepted. Uh, the varieties are being picked up, and we're, they're requesting more varieties carrying this because the markets have changed. The, the, the territory that we want to cover with uh, eggplant is very vast. So we need to continue to increase the um, uh, number of varieties. But the fact that we go from 20 to 65, let's say, over the last few years, it tells us that there's a huge business opportunity too. So, we have been able so far to reach so many farmers, but to be able to uh, reach more farmers, mm -hmm. we need a really great network of uh, seed producers. Um, and um, we think that it's, the system is ready for the private sector to come and support um, the technology because there is a business case to be made because farmers really are growing it. And we cannot reach all the farmers. Um, so we believe that the next uh, stage is creating a second generation of varieties that have higher yield, have the quality that the farmers want, uh, have the wilt resistant that would allow to grow um, Bt beryngial in summer because it will have the resistance to wilt. That is another pass, another disease of uh, beryngial. It's one of the things that has prevented the expansion mm -hmm. of beryngial. So we hope that once we have this new package, of new varieties, and we will need additional uh, networks to um, uh, in, in, to exactly to reach more farmers. So one of the things that we're doing right now is engaging nurseries. So far, we only have uh, engaged with seeds, um, delivering seed to farmers. So in this next season, we are going to start seeing in the fields nurseries that carry seedlings of these varieties. So the goal is that then we have another entry point to reach more and more farmers. One of the advantages of using nurseries is that now we can also um, increase the partnerships with private sector, small, medium-sized businesses that have nurseries and then uh, even large uh, nurseries, especially those that are uh, led or owned by women. Why? Because we want everybody to participate mm -hmm. in the value chain and, and, and really benefit not only from eating, 
BT Beringo that is safer, but also because they're now participating in the business part of um, this uh, crop and will improve not only um, their livelihood and the livelihood of their families, but the communities itself. So how the project will support this, uh, this, this whole like thing that you discussed, uh, engaging more uh, private and public sector, small uh, or mid scale, you know, like nursery or, or female entrepreneur, Will, will project continue supporting them and how, how it will like uh, work? That's a great question because technology doesn't get um, disseminated on its own. It needs support because there's a lot to learn. Uh, not only about uh, how is BT Beringel needs to be produced because one of the things that is important to protect that technology is that uh, BT Beringel needs to be grown with a border of regular eggplant. Why? Because we want the pathogen, sorry, the pest, uh, to be able to grow into those sites of the field so that um, doesn't develop resistance to the protein. So we have this, what we call the refuge. So that's one of the things that we need to teach farmers and producers that they need to maintain. That is the only difference that they have to, of, of how to manage differently their, their field compared to their regular beringo. Conventional so beringo it is excellent yeah. because it's just easy, but we need to uh, train um, um, farmers and producers on and how educate to do them that, about educate it, them about yeah. it, and the why. Why? Because we want to protect the technology for generations to come. Other than that, um, we are going to really pr um, provide excellent, high-quality seed uh, so that the nurseries can grow healthy plants. And the good thing is, in Bangladesh, there are many well-educated uh, nursery owners that know how to. So we don't have to go into the details about growing because they know how to grow already beringel because they grow beringel regularly, hybrids and, and open pollinated. So BT beringel will fit right in. So this BT beringel project actually started back in 2003, 4, and 5 and continued working with the partners in Bangladesh. Do you think that uh, this will continue in the same way or there is a like, sustainability or approach of sustainability in, in the whole portfolio that you are dealing with? So that's a really good question because what we see is that many times a project comes in and then when the project is done, the technology dies back. Uh, nobody picks it up. We believe that we be, with the investment that we have made in terms of capacity building with young early career scientists in uh, at Bardi and working with other uh, research and academic institutions, we have in the country a strong group of uh, scientists, of uh, development agents, extension agents, seed system that can really maintain that technology. Working very close with the breeding uh, program and others, we believe that the project will take on because the farmers wants it. And if the farmers are requesting the seed and the business, then it, it, it makes a good case for uh, business owners. I think the technology will continue. And that has been always our goal that we will sustain that technology with capacity building in country by working really closely with the organizations in the country, no matter that is academic, research, and policy makers, so that they can see the value and sustain it on their own. We know that uh, biotech crop and agribiotechnology, these tools are actually evolving in other countries, mostly in developed countries, and at some part, developing countries are also trying to out of this advanced technology. Mm -hmm. So in, in your view, how this technology is evolving? Is, is, are other countries really uh, uh, have their own capacity enough to, to continue doing this uh, work in, in, with, using this tool or they need uh, to continue support from, from international community? How you actually evaluate the whole thing? That's a, a really good point, Arif, because over the past decades, most of that technology has been adopted now uh, from developed countries, from very keen, uh, unique laboratories. And what we're seeing, a proliferation of capacity in many countries, especially in developing countries. Scientists have been trained, um, have the knowledge that capacities laboratories has been developed, and the governments are supporting technologies such as gene editing, GM technology like the traditional one, but many other other scientific advances. Bioscience is not going anywhere except forward. Um, so we, for the past decade, have learned a lot about genetics, about protein function. So what we're going to see, or we are already seeing, is an explosion of applications. Mm -hmm. That that's where we want it to go, because the science is, is strong, is, um, is safe, 
Now is how do we apply it? So by having many more laboratories, many more institutions investing in technology such as uh, gene editing that have so many opportunities and potential for adaptation to climate change, salinity, drought, uh, increasing uh, nutritional value of crops, in so many different countries, what we're going to see is that not only a couple of crops will be able to participate of those benefits, but we will have more culturally appropriate, more adapted to the particular countries, crops that can carry then these technologies because they are um, more accessible. They are homegrown, so in terms of aseptum, it's easier to, for the scientists to really communicate with the policymakers in country because it's their own investment. Right. And so I think that we're going to see over the next year many more other countries, like we're seeing already in Africa, for example, where in Kenya, we were seeing in, in Nigeria, we're seeing it in South Africa, where they are all taking up um, this idea of developing homegrown technologies that they can apply. And they are taking it in their own hands in terms not only of the research, but the policy, working directly with the different institutions, the different programs, and with the international community. We are learning a lot from these laboratories, so I think we're going to see a lot more happening. So do you think that with this horizontal approach, is it a more like sustainable approach to the technology? I think so. And that's what we really want to build on capacity, uh, providing opportunities for early career scientists to get training, not only at home, but also abroad, collaboration, being part of the community. Because if we don't maintain that capacity, you know, then it will always be this north versus Same, south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't want that. And that's the, the technology that exists right now is very accessible. And I think that we're going to see a lot more participants. And that, to me, is the best news ever. So why do you think uh, women and youth will fit in this uh, technological advancement, particularly in, in biotech or egg biotech portfolio? So you mean like... Uh, more youth and, and, yeah, and, and women, women empowerment. empowerment. Yeah. So I think it's a great opportunity. Again, because uh, not only the training, the education they are receiving, they're ready for it, but they're curious about it and they have a lot of entrepreneurship energy. And I think that we are going to engage them more because agriculture is profitable. You have many ways to enter then agriculture. It's not only about production, it's about the whole value chain. So the more participants we get across and diverse participants across the value chain, more opportunities not only for development of technology, sustainability, and more ideas. And we know that when the entire community participates, we get better ideas, better adoption, and better future for everybody. So uh, Maricelis, we are almost end of our program. I mean, uh, uh, back in the like BT Brinjal or BT eggplant, uh, why should people grow it and why people uh, should consume it? So to farmers out there, if you are an eggplant farmer or if you are not but are considering uh, planting eggplant, talk to your seed dealers, talk to the scientists, talk to the extension agents, and ask about BT Beringel. Why? Because it's safer for you and your family and the environment, increases the uh, production in your fields, increases your income from the same amount of land, it reduces your costs, and you will have a much better uh, quality of product that is safer for you, the environment. So please reach out. They will help you identify the varieties that work well for you and your farm. And you will not regret it because you're going to see that it actually works. And you, I'm sure you're going to be telling your friends and family about the successes in your farm. Thank you, Maricelis, for your time and valuable uh, uh, opinion and comment that you shared. Darshok, today we Bangladesh Bangladesh Krishi Gobeshan Institute Korte Kudhabito Bari Biti Begoner Bivino Dik Shamporke abong Air Bortman Puristi Bhavishot Kornia Shamporke. Amrajani Krishi Biborton Hotse. Not to project Bangladesh Shorkar abong Bangladesh Krishi Bavasta Grohon Korche. She Dharabay Kota Duhajar Terra Shale Bangladesh Shorkar Biti Begoner Chati Jat Abomukto Kore. Amraske Jante Palam Biti Begoner She Project Shepori Kol Ponagulu Aro Ki Kore Hotse Besikore Krishok abong Besikore Notun Jater Modhe Project Tite Pare Shamporke. আমরা বিশ্বাস করি নতুন প্রযুক্তি সব সময় কৃষক এবং ভোক্তার জন্য সুফল বয়ে আনে আমরা যে বর্তমানে ক্রান্তির মধ্যে দিয়ে যাচ্ছে সেই ক্রান্তি উত্তরে সুন্দর ভবিষ্যতের জন্য সবাই কাজ করবে এই আশাবাদ ব্যক্ত করে বিদায় নিচ্ছি ফার্মিং ফিউচার বাংলাদেশ টিভিতে দীপ্ত কৃষি সংলাপের আমাদের আজকের এই আয়োজন থেকে আমাদের এই আয়োজন নিয়মিত প্রচারিত হচ্ছে দীপ্ত টিভিতে প্রতিদিন প্রতি শুক্রবার বিকেল 4:30 মিনিটে সবাই ভালো থাকবেন সুস্থ থাকবেন নিরাপদে থাকবেন ধন্যবাদ